Today, we're going to start going over some of the basics of 3ds Max, including about half of these tools up here on the top of our toolbar, how to move around the screen, and maybe how to manipulate some objects. So let's start in the upper left-hand corner, these two arrows. If you mouse over any one of these, it will tell you what it is. So in the upper left-hand corner, we have undo, and then next to that is redo. Undo, hopefully self-explanatory, will undo any action that we've done in 3ds Max. And redo will redo that action. There is a set number by default of times that you can undo and redo. And if I'm not mistaken, 20 is the default. But if you would like to change that, we're going to come into Customize and go to Preferences. And here, under the General tab, under Preference Settings, we can change our Scene Undo Level. I, I believe that 20 is the default. I like to keep mine around 50, which uh, means that there will be a little bit bigger file size because we're keeping 50 undo levels, but we're fine with that. While we're here, what I would like to do is talk about one extremely important thing with 3ds Max, and that's the fact that it has the ability to save files automatically, what it calls an auto back or an auto backup. And if I'm not mistaken, this is under files, and then we have auto backup. We want to make sure that it's checked by default it is. By default, the number of auto back files it saves is three. You can do this as many times as you want to. Um, and then the backup interval. So right now what I'm saying is I want you to keep 10 files backed up in an inter interval of five minutes. So I have 50 minutes worth of work to save. Now at 55 minutes, it starts overriding these. It doesn't keep continuing to create auto back files as I said only keep 10. But this is definitely something that I would enable and have a good number here. So that if something were to happen, if Max crashes or whatnot, or your file becomes corrupted, then here, because I have my backup interval of five minutes, the least or the most work that I've lost is five minutes worth of work because I can always go to a backup. I would highly, highly recommend that. So we began looking at the undo level and we talked about the auto backup. Okay. Next, to the right of redo, we have what looks like a chain. And if we mouse over it, it says select and link. What this does, if we have geometry or in our scene, I'm just going to create two pieces of geometry and we'll go over how to move around in the scene. Right now, I just wanted to you show you how these tools work. Um, what this does is this will link one to the other. So I'm going to click on one, hold my mouse, and I'll know that it's working if I see that dotted line. And I just go to the other and I've got my link icon and my other geometry starts to glow. I let go, those are now linked. So if I move one, nothing, because we go from child to parent. If I move this one, both move. So that's what this one does. It links objects together. And we can have multiple objects. So right now I'm just undoing. So if I have a, maybe another box and I want to link it also, just to make sure, I'm going to make sure that one's linked. And I have both of these, which are called children, and this is called the parent. Now they both move. They can move individually, but whatever the parent does, the child will do also. If I want to break those links, I, there's another way that I can do it, but what I'm going to show is right here, unlink selection. So I've selected my three objects. I'll click unlink. And now what we'll see is I can still move these, but this one used to move all of them, and now it doesn't because that link is broken. Okay, the next one to the right of that is called Bind to Space Warp. And this is probably not something that you would see too much if you're just beginning 3ds Max, but we do have areas where we would use what's called the Space Warp. And that's under our Create tab, Space Warp. So I went to Create, and it looks like Wavy Bacon, Space Warp. And we're not going to go over this too much, but what this would allow us to do is we have a particle system, which we're not going to go over in, in this video, we could have a particle system and a space warp, and we would use this to tell the particle system what space warp information to use. So again, I know that uh, we're not going to go over that in this video, and it might seem like it's too much to talk about, but I just wanted to let you know what this button does. Okay, next to that, we have a selection filter. 
This is really helpful if we have a large scene with a lot of different objects in there, but it can also be kind of frustrating if we forget that we're using it. So right now, under my selection filter, I have the word all by default, which means the scene is going to let me select anything in my scene. But if I change it to say geometry, then I can only select geometry. So let's, let's look at an example of that. So I'm gonna bring simple geometry in, and again, I'll bring in a box in, and then maybe a light. And I know that I'm clicking a lot of things and I'm not really explaining why, and that's okay because I'm just going over what these tools are. Bring in an Omni, which is a type of light. Okay, if I choose just geometry, and I try to choose my light, it won't let me. Because in my filter, I'm saying only choose geometry. Now, if I choose light, then I can choose my light, but now I can't choose my geometry. So that's really helpful if I have a lot of objects that are on top of each other or close to each other, and I don't want to go in and, and keep clicking until I get the right one. I can use a selection set or a selection filter. Um, but it can be frustrating if I forget that I have this on and it's like, how come I can't select my box? My 3ds Max is broken. It won't let me select my box. And the whole while we're telling it that we only want to be able to select light. Okay, so I changed that back to all. Now I should be able to select whatever I want. Okay. Next, next it is select object. What this does is just, just that. Let you select an object. But what it doesn't have is any one of these trans these transform rotator scales, so I can't accidentally move my object. Whereas if I have one of these on and I click and move, then it, it will move it. So I click and hold my mouse down, it will, it will move it. And then next to that, we have what's called select by name. So I have two objects in my scene, which doesn't seem like a lot, but if I had thousands in my scene and I couldn't quite click on an object, then I can come in and select it by name. So what, did, what I did is click select by name, and then this select from scene box will come up. And you can see that I have my two objects in my scene and their names. Some other things that are helpful about this is I can choose what geometry or choose what objects I want to show. So if I don't want to show cameras, I can click where it doesn't show cameras or light, which you can see my light went away. Or if I don't want to show geometry, you can see that my geometry went away. So that can be helpful if you have a lot of things in your scene and you, maybe you don't remember what one, one, one object is, but you remember what it's named, then you can use that. Okay, next to um, the select by name, we have our selection region, and we have two different options here. The first one, rectangular selection region, which we can do rectangular or circular or polygon or spray. This is going to let us choose whatever our box touches or whatever our selection touches. So even if it's not, completely in the selection, the dotted selection box, we can see that I can just, as long as it touches any part of it, it's fine. Next to that, if I have window crossing, then my window has to be completely in it. So um, if I have the, the window, then it, it can be touching and it's fine. The other one uh, is it has to be completely inside. So if I select a little bit, you can see it's not selecting my box. Said I have to select everything. It has to be in that window. Okay. To the right of that is our select and move, select and rotate, select and uniform scale. So my select and move, this is a transform. So I can move my object on three different axes, my X, Y, and Z axis. And I would recommend that you get familiar with X, Y, and Z because everything in 3ds Max far as movement and whatnot will work on X, Y, and Z. So if I want to rotate, I can click on rotate. I can rotate my object on the X, Y, and Z if I want to. Okay, and then scale. I have a couple of different scales, but let's look at the one by default, which is select and uniform scale, which means it's going to scale uniformly or I can scale uniformly. If I click and hold, then I have different options. I can scale non-uniform, Okay. Or if I click and hold, I can select and squash. Okay. So we'll go back to default. Yeah. The next button next to that is called select and place. 
and we have other options for that also, the rotation and uh, transform, so or movement. What I'm going to do is create an object to show you how this works. I'm going to do the now the select and place, I can select an object, and when I mouse over another object, it will try to place the object on top of it, the first object. You see, I'm trying to touch that object. If I select the sphere, go to the square, it tries to do the same thing, tries to put it on top. Okay. This next box can be a little difficult if we don't understand how it works, but hopefully I'll be able to explain it enough that it won't be quite so menacing to you. Here on our reference coordinate system, this is going to basically what view we're going to use for our coordinate system. So as we can see right now with view, my Z is facing straight up and my X and Y are facing Two different directions there. So we have y and x. I can change that with my reference by saying local. Now it doesn't look like it moved too much, but this is where the x, y, and z is actually local to the box itself. So if I rotate and then I go back, what we'll see is now my x, y, and z is pointing, z is pointing up towards the face or the top face of the box, x and y to the side. If I change it to working, then again, it's kind of the, the X is facing upward, or I'm sorry, Z. The parent, if I had a link like we had here where I had a parent and a child, then the X, Y, Z would be dependent on the parent location and not the child. So this is one of those things that you can play around with to try to get a better understanding of how they work. But this can be really helpful if I'm trying to move, for example, if I want to move my box in the direction that it's facing, then I can go to local and then I can move it in its direction instead of trying to, if I was in view and then trying to do it exactly the same using a combination of the Z and Y axis. Okay, next we have the use pivot point center, and we can change that to be whatever we want. And you can see that our transform, which is always located at our pivot, or in this instance, our transform coordinate center, is where our rotation, translation, and scale is going to be located. And here we're using our pivot center, and here we can use our selection center for the, the Selection or the center of our selection. So if I had another box, it should be changed still if I have both of these selected. So we'll see that it's changed based on where both of them are. So we'll go, go ahead and take that back to the pivot center. The next button to the right is our select and manipulate. This really doesn't apply to anything unless we have what's called a, a manipulator on. So if I go to create, and I believe under helpers, and then go to manipulators, I'm going to see like a slider, and I'm going to come in and create a basic slider value, whatever. Then I can't do anything with this object unless I have what I can manipulate on and we know it's on because it's blue so we need this axis and then here i can come in and change my manipulator so we can't really do anything with manipulators unless that select and manipulate is on okay. next but next to that is keyboard shortcut override toggle which means that if we have a shortcut um, in the program and we have a shortcut that we use for our keyboard the keyboard will overwrite the shortcut. So if I have some kind of shortcut here that lets me rotate or whatever, but I have a shortcut key that, that is different. So instead of, um, I believe, E is my shortcut key for rotate, but if my rotate was something else on screen, then my keyboard would override it. So that's either on or off. Okay. Then we come into our snap, 
and these four objects here are snap. And that can help us if we're trying to move something specifically or rotate at a specific angle. So I'll create a box. And I know that I'm going pretty fast, and that's okay, because I'm just trying to show you again what these buttons do. So if I click on my snap, we can see this yellow box with a uh, plus sign. And it's snapping to the center of my grid each time I move it. Well, it would also do that if I try to move my object. So let's move. I've got a snap on, so it tries to snap to where we are. If I come to, instead of 2D, if I click and hold and go to 3D, you see that we're trying to snap to the grid. Okay, and that can be really good if we want to move it in a certain spot. We want to be precise. And the same goes for our angle snap. If we're wanting to move, instead of with our angle snap off, if we rotate, you can see that we are we can go, we can rotate in extremely small increments, but if we don't want to, if we want to be more precise, then we can click on our angle snap toggle. And now we're snapping by five degrees. And I have that set to five degrees. I think 3ds max by default is 2.5 maybe, but we can change that. On any one of these, I can right click on the button. Now I've got my grid and snap settings. So my snap, I can change uh, what we're using here. If I want to use a pivot or vertex or a face, other options, if I want to, uh, my marker size, so the bigger this number, the more that uh, yellow plus sign will look. My snap radius, which I'm, uh, my angle percentage, which is what we have here, my angle percent is five degrees. If I wanted to do a percent snap toggle, then we have ten percent. So this can help us. Now we know how we can use it. Okay, this next button is an edit name selection set, which, go, which goes along with our selection set creation. So if I have an object, let's bring a couple more in. Just here, maybe, ah, uh, CSP pop, why not? I can name different selections different things. So let's say like I want to have these two objects and I want them to have a selection set name. So let's maybe say round, because they're kind of round. Then when I come in, if I want to select those things and I know it's round, then I can click on my round and I'll have those two things selected. Or maybe if I have these two things selected and I want to create another one, then I can say maybe green because they're both kind of greenish color. Then what I can do is come into my drop down and choose green. Well, if I didn't want to call it green, maybe I spelt it wrong or whatever, then I can edit the main selection set. So I have here, I have green and round. So if I want to delete it, or if I want to create a new set from other sets, if I want to add something to the select or to the set, subtract, whatever I want to do, I can come in and do that. If I want to rename it, maybe I just double click and it will show me whatever's in there. So we'll click. And then I'm going to just say instead of green, I'll just say green. And now it's saying green. Okay. Next, let's go to the mirror tool. Now, mirror can be extremely powerful. And it, what it does is it allows us to mirror what we have selected. In this case, I have geometry selected. So if I click on my mirror tool, by default, it's going to try to mirror it on the x-axis with no copy. And maybe I want to change that. Maybe I want to have it mirror on the z-axis. And I want to make a copy instance or reference. And we will go over the difference between copy instance and reference in a later video. But if we wanted to do that, then we have a copy of our object mirrored on the z-axis. The next tool is our align tool. And this is really powerful in that it allows us to align one object to another. So I'm going to select an object, click align, and I can align by a lot of different things. It's going to show just how to align, basically. So click on an object, click align. Click another object, and now we have our align selection. We can align by our x, y, z position. If we don't want to align to one of these, we can uncheck it. And if I want to align the current object, which is the first one, 
that I picked by pivot or it's minimum or minimum maximum target the same thing. If I want the orientation or rotation to be the same, and if I want the scale to be the same, I can do all of these things. And I can apply it. Okay. And it aligned it. This is good if we want to align things like, I don't know, weapons to a character's hand. We can do that kind of thing. Okay. The next button is our Toggle Scene Explorer. And this is something that is relatively new to CVS Max in that it wasn't always there. And it's modeled off of uh, the same thing in Maya. And here I can explore everything in my scene. And I can choose whether or not it's frozen. So if it's frozen, you cannot select it. You can't do anything with it. If I take it where it's not frozen, then I can select it. If I don't want to see it, then I can turn off my light. So it's no longer in our, well, it's in our scene, but we can't see it. Or if I want to parent, I can drag this down to my second teapot. And now this is a child of the second teapot. And this is, a, this is really, really powerful. And we're not going to get into all the things you can do on this one, just what it's able to do, or what it's used for, basically. OK, next to our Toggle Scene Explorer, we have our Toggle Layer Explorer. Now, our Layer Explorer is a lot has been in Max a lot longer than the Scene Explorer. And what this allows us to do is cre to create layers and be able to add things to layers. So by default, we have a default layer. And by default, everything goes to our default layer. If we want to create a new layer, we can. Create a new layer. You can name it whatever you want. And if I want to add things to this layer, I can. If I want to hide the entire layer, I can. Or if I want to freeze it, or if I want to make it so that it's not renderable, which means it won't show up in our renderer, I can do that. And if I want to display it, let me open this up so you can see it a little bit better. As a box, which it would have a box around there. It, that can help if you have a lot of geometry in your scene, so you don't slow down your scene. OK. Next to our Toggle Layer Explorer, we have Toggle Ribbon, which is here, if you want to use those buttons there. So I can take it away, take it back. My Curve Editor, which is um, really good to know when, you're, when you start animating. Because here, I can track all of my curves and all of my objects. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to take this object and move it. Now I have a basic animation. Okay, but if I select that object and open my curve editor, now I can see that same animation represented in a graphical way. And I can manipulate all of these points to do things which we're not going to go over right now, but we will, will in later videos, especially when we start talking about basic animation. That's what the curve editor does. Now, high or schematic view is um, what it allows us to do is see all of the objects in our scene, and we can control hierarchy. It's really good to control hierarchy. So I'm able to create a parent and child relationship, um, hierarchy mode, and all the, you know, we can connect, we can break our links and everything like we did before. A lot of these tools are redundant, and that's okay. The awesome thing about that, it means is that there's not just one way to do things. There's several different ways. For an example, if I want to move this object, I can click on it. And by default, it'll have something, usually the transformer, the last one that you use. Um, there are several different ways I can get to this. If I want to move, I can click on the object. And up in the, our tools that we went over already, I can select and move. I can also right click on the object. And I have move, rotate, scale. Or there are shortcut keys. So W, E, and R. W for move, E to rotate, R for scale. So that's one really awesome thing about 3ds Max is that there are a lot of different ways to get the same effect. There's not just one way to do most anything. OK, next to that, we have our material editor, which by default, 3ds Max will be in the slate material editor. And we're not going to go over that right now, but we will when we start getting into material. So, and we'll go over both different types. But that's how to open up our material editor. Again, next to that, we have our render setup. We can bring up our render setup. 
And again, we won't go over that. This is just different things that we can do. We can assign different renderers. We can assign properties, our output size, where to save it to. Next to that, where we have our render setup, we have our render frame window. So that way we don't have anything set up, so we're not seeing it. But we can use that tool. There it is. And we have render production, or we also have um, production, iterative. And I believe this one is actually right. So these are um, some will render faster than others. Let's just put it that way. So, but by default, production is the one that is there. And then we have next to that, we have the render in Autodesk A360, which is um, not something that we use very much, but it's basically like cloud, cloud rendering. And then next to that, we have the 360 gallery. If you save those, or if you want to take a look at the gallery, and there's that. Okay, so what we've done is very, 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 very briefly gone over all the icons and what they do. So let's talk about how to move around with the screen. And this involves mainly your mouse. So if I click and hold my middle mouse button, I can move my scene around. This is called panning. Okay. If I click my middle mouse button and hold Alt, then I can rotate around my scene. And if I click and hold Alt, if my click my middle mouse button and hold it, click Alt and hold it and control, then I can zoom. So my middle mouse button or middle mouse button and control C, these are both or control are both pan. Middle mouse button and alt is rotate. Middle mouse button, alt, and control is zoom. You can also use the view cube. So if I want to go to the top, I can click on top. Or if I want to click with my left mouse button and rotate around, pan. If I want to rotate, click on front. Click right, top. So we've gone over all of our icons at the top, how to move objects how to rotate them, how to scale them, and how to move in our scene. I think that's pretty good for this one. So what I would suggest is to play around with these buttons and see well, what they do if you don't remember, see how they can work together, get comfortable with moving around in our scene, get comfortable with moving objects in our scene, and until then, have fun.